Amid a national outcry for stricter gun safety measures to stop America's plague of mass shootings, pro-gun politicians who refuse to take action are pitching an insane alternative. Instead of getting rid of guns, they want to get rid of doors. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. This should be blindingly obvious to anyone with clear eyes and a conscience, but America has more mass shootings than any peer nation in the world because we have more guns than any other peer nation in the world. Study after study after study has proven that, although I'm not sure we need a study to confirm what we can all see with our own eyes. It's common sense, common sense to everyone. Apparently, except for the craven ghouls who refuse to even acknowledge America's gun crisis. In fact, those guys have a different idea for stopping mass shootings. Just get rid of doors. We have to harden these targets so no one can get in ever except through one entrance. Maybe that would would help. Maybe that would stop someone. One of the things that, that, that everyone agreed is don't have all of these unlocked back doors. Have one door into and out of the school and have that one door armed police officers at that door. I'm sorry, you don't want gun control, but you want door control? Are you, are you, why not stop at one? Why not just outlaw doors altogether that no one would need keys? To get in your house, you just have to climb up to the roof and slide headfirst down the chimney. You really? You really think one door is a good idea? Then how about you try it first? One door for the Senate, and you can all line up to go in every day, which Ted Cruz might not think is bad, but it's a nightmare for whoever has to stand next to Ted Cruz. <laughs> you know, this one door thing was my idea. Can we not? <laughs> Just spitballing here, but maybe run this idea by a fire marshal first and see what they have to say about it, because Famously, nothing bad has ever happened when there's only one way in and one way out of a crowded building. Can you imagine what would happen if someone in an office, say, with only one door yelled fire, or worse still, Ted Cruz is in the break room? <laughs> These obviously aren't serious ideas. They're pathetic excuses from the most depraved people in our politics who would rather do the bidding of powerful forces like the NRA than do anything to stop these massacres from happening. In fact, Cruz and Donald Trump, among others, are still scheduled to address an NRA event in Texas on Friday. These people would rather talk about door control than the obvious answers that have worked in other peer nations across the world, from Australia to the UK to Norway to New Zealand, and that's to regulate guns. And by the way, when we've done it here, like the 1994 assault weapons ban, it worked too. We have too many guns and they're too easy to get, and it's as simple as that. And it's sickening and rage-inducing that people in positions of power just ignore those obvious truths, no matter how loud we say them, which might be why Beto would work the Democratic candidate for governor in Texas interrupted a press conference yesterday to tell Texas Governor Greg Abbott directly, in a way that Abbott could not ignore, that something must be done now to stop these horrific events from happening again. And Cruz, who was there as well, could not help but respond while displaying an astonishing lack of self-awareness. No. Texas gubernatorial candidate Beto O'Rourke interrupted Governor Abbott's press conference, saying yesterday's shooting was, quote, totally predictable, and talking to reporters afterward, blaming Abbott for refusing to strengthen gun laws. Excuse me. S sit down. You're out of, you're out of line and an embarrassment. Hey. Sit down and don't play this stuff. I'm sorry, Ted Cruz is accusing someone else of pulling a stunt? This is the same guy who read green eggs and ham on the Senate floor released a campaign ad where he used a machine gun to fry bacon and posted a video of himself lurking in the bushes at the Rio Grande like he was auditioning for a role on Duck Dynasty. He looks like <laughs> he's being filmed for a nature documentary on the BBC. A rare sighting of the bearded coward indigenous to these parts <laughs> until he makes his annual flight south for the winter. Listen, listen to the sound of his rolly suitcase across the linoleum with Experts say is his way of telling predators, I suck, I suck. If you eat me, you'll probably puke. And then, in a pretty stunning exchange, Ted Cruz was confronted by a reporter for Sky News about why these kind of horrific events only happen in America. And since Cruz had no answer, aside from the obvious one, he doesn't want to discuss guns, he angrily stormed off. Is this the moment to reform gun laws? You know, it's, it's easy to go to politics. But it's important. It's at the heart of the issue. I, I get that that's where the media likes to go. No, it's not. It's where many of the people we've talked to here like to go. You get your political agenda. No, it's God, honestly... God love you. Senator, it's not. I just want to understand why you do not think that guns are the problem. Why is this just an American problem? 
it is just an American problem, sir. Mr. Cruz, why is America the only country that faces this kind of you know what? mass shooting? But you can't, you can't answer that. You can't answer that, can you, sir? You can't answer that. Why you know, is this country? Why is it that people come from all over the world to America? Because it's the freest, most prosperous, safest country on Earth. Maybe the, and it may be the freest, it may be the most popular. Why are our kids dying in but, <laughs> Man, look at him run away. I bet he was thankful that place had more than one door. <laughs> they got more. Cruz had no answer because the obvious one, the number and easy availability of military-grade weapons in this country, is one he doesn't want to discuss. In his case, he's choosing the ludicrous idea of door control as a distraction. But in other cases, pro-gun Republicans just admit they don't want to do anything. Like when Colorado Congresswoman Lauren Boebert tweeted yesterday, you cannot legislate away evil. Or when Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton said this. We can't stop bad people from doing bad things. They're going to violate murder laws. They're not going to follow gun laws. I've never understood that argument. Laws don't work is a hell of a thing to hear from somebody whose job description is to make or enforce laws. At least, <laughs> at least the weirdos in the New Age store believe that the $40 crystals they're selling actually work. By the way, they don't. Either that or I'm sitting on them wrong. Also, <laughs> stop hiding behind the bull talking point that calling for gun control is somehow politicizing tragedy and that there's nothing lawmakers can do. First of all, you guys are the ones using politics to loosen gun laws. Second, what else is politics for if not to deal with a crisis like this? That's what our political system is supposed to do. You're a lawmaker. If you don't want to do your job, then just go back to the bushes to live with the other Bigfoots. <laughs> Hello, fellow Bigfoots. I'm Ted Cruz. Uh, uh, Bigfoot need door to get away from this man. <laughs> This is why it was so cathartic for so many people to see someone just directly confront the people in power who refuse to take action because so often they behave as though they can simply ignore us. They act like they don't have to care what we think or how we feel, like they're totally immune from accountability and public opinion. And that's because this is a political party that sees itself as insulated from public accountability and popular opinion. I mean, measures like background checks and assault weapons bans, which should be the bare minimum, are massively popular across political lines. And yet pro-gun politicians and the powerful interests behind them simply do not care. They think democracy does not apply to them. That's why they want to cheat in elections and dismantle democracy on guns or any other issue. They just do not see themselves as accountable to public opinion. I mean, for God's sake, we just found out yesterday that on the day of an attempted coup to overturn an election, the outgoing president reacted approvingly when he heard the mob was chanting, hang Mike Pence, Trump's former Chief of Staff Mark Meadows reportedly told colleagues that Trump had said maybe Pence should be hanged. And somehow we're all supposed to just like move on from that. <laughs> I saw that headline yesterday, let out a long sigh, and then just had to keep scrolling. Then I did, I will admit, I did laugh a little thinking about sometime in the future when Pence tries to be diplomatic to appeal to Trump's base and says something like, President Trump and I don't always see eye to eye. For example, I thought hanging me was a bad idea. <laughs> Different strokes. <laughs> this is, of course, the same guy who famously tried to steal the election in Georgia by shaking down the Secretary of State like a mob boss. So after that attempt failed, Trump quickly developed a vendetta against Georgia's statewide Republican officials, including the guy on that phone call, Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger and Governor Brian Kemp. And by the way, neither of these guys are secret liberals. Raffensperger has supported voter suppression efforts in the state, and Kemp is such a rock-ribbed conservative, he once aired this actual television ad. I'm Brian Kemp. I'm so conservative, I blow up government spending. My chainsaw's ready to rip up some regulations. I got a big truck, just in case I need to round up criminal illegals and take them home myself. Yep, I just said that. Cool, he's got the same slogan as this stand-up comic who thinks he's being edgy by telling jokes about how millennials are pampered. Oh, yeah, how about instead of whining about student loans, you stop spending 12 bucks on avocado toast? Yeah. <laughs> I just said that. Also, where'd you guys go for the kick-ass explosion? Steven Seagal's House of Discount Special Effects? <laughs> I may be... I may be... <laughs> Sorry, I forgot I have to do Steven Seagal. Do I... Sh we're gonna edit this out, he's gonna go to full frame, and it's gonna come right out like I knew what was coming. <laughs> I just remember, I just said, Steven Seagal. <laughs> no, <Brent. laughs> it has to feel really real. 
<laughs> I may be above the law, but my prices are below the competition. <laughs> and yet, and yet, and yet, because Kevin Raffensperger refused to commit election fraud and single-handedly overturned the results, Trump pursued personal vendettas against them by recruiting and endorsing primary challengers who embraced his big lie. It's the same thing that happened in Pennsylvania, where a pro-coup candidate who wanted to overturn that state's results in 2020 is now the GOP nominee for governor there. Only in Georgia, Trump's plan didn't work. Going into the election, Kemp's challenger, David Perdue, was already down double digits despite Trump's endorsement, although he refused, of course, to accept that reality. You were down by 30 percentage points in the polls. What's well, happened to your campaign? Well, first of all, where'd you get the 30 points? Fox News poll. Right. Where'd they get it from? Are you not down 30 no, no, points? No, no, no. Hell no, I'm not down 30 points. In a way, he was right. Currently, he's down by 50 points. <laughs> hell no, I'm not down 30 points. I wish. <laughs> I'll give my right arm to be within 30 points. You see that guy I'm running against? Got explosions, a chainsaw, big old truck. I wish I was that guy. Instead, I'm a big old drip. <laughs> the Republican Party and the gun lobby see themselves as immune to democracy and public opinion, which is why they don't care that large majorities of people want stricter gun safety laws. They think they can just brazenly ignore voters and still hold on to power by cheating. That's part of why this all feels so frustrating and infuriating and rage-inducing. These people don't think they have to care what we, the American people, want. But as we discussed at length yesterday, other countries in our own history have shown us time and again that we can change things. We can stop these horrors. We have that power. It hasn't always been like this. It doesn't always have to be like this. Pro-gun politicians and the entrenched special interests behind them could try to ignore us all they want, but we must keep at it. Whether it's calling one lawmaker or making one donation or knocking on one door This has been a closer look. God's love we deliver cooks and brings over two million meals a year to men, women, and children living with HIV AIDS, cancer, and other serious illnesses. And they need your help now more than ever. If you're watching this online, you can hit the donate button. Stay safe, get vaccinated. We love you.